Thank you for joining me on today's video. I can't wait to show you something I've been working on for camping, um, especially for car camping. And I will see you when I get to my destination. Even though it's a gray day, it's still kind of beautiful, you know? We're just coming into February. That means it's getting a little bit closer to spring. And I'm really happy about that. Miles Standish State Forest right now, which I believe is about 12,000 acres of um, forested trails, bike paths, picnic areas, campgrounds, and uh, obviously it's the off season. Oh, wow, there's somebody flying around this corner right now. That truck that just went by. And uh, I thought today would be a good area. I mean, today would be a good area. I thought today would be a good day to come out here. This is considered to be the Pine Barrens of Massachusetts, not to be conf confused with the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, where the Jersey Devil is. But yeah, we're out here, and uh, if you do any kind of car camping or anything like that, what I'm going to show you today will help you out as far as privacy and security. So you might have an idea, but stay tuned and then we're going to make some lunch. I'm going to make a simple, sexy salad that is sensational. Yeah, it's a sexy salad. Wait till you see it. It's so delicious. And I'm like on the salad kick now, maybe because springtime's coming and it's a little more of me lately. <laughs> so I want to try and uh, shed a couple of pounds. Just a couple. And, uh, all right, anyways, let me find a spot to uh, park up, figure out where I'm going here, and I'll bring you back in a moment. Some of these roads are non-maintained. They're not maintained, so they're not plowed in the snow. Um, so we're gonna stay on roads that are maintained. A lot of people get stuck out here. <laughs> I'm not gonna be one of them, not today. So enjoy some of the scenery, and I will bring you back as soon as I figure out where I'm going. road up here. It looks like a roller coaster. You know, it doesn't really pick up too well on the camera, but... So anyways, I found a spot to park up here. So I figured I'd show you around the area a little bit. I haven't been here. So you're seeing this for the first time. The same as I, I'm just kind of exploring around today. Let's go check out some of this area. Looks like a lot of little picnic areas. I'm not sure if this is like a camp area right here or just a picnic area. I don't know if you're familiar with Miles Standish at all, but I'm kind of near the Charge Loop area, Faring Pond area. Like I said, if I'm, I don't think I'm wrong, but I think this place, okay, hi. <laughs> I think this place is about 12,000 acres. 
So feel free to look it up if you want. What's this? I might want to get the keys. I have my keys just sitting in the ignition. It's a little chilly today. Right now it's about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it's not really windy, so that does make a difference. As you know, when it's windy, it seems like it's a lot colder. A lot of these benches, let's see if I can show you that. A lot of these benches of, or picnic tables have flipped over. Some of them aren't. And some of them are. I imagine because it's off season. A lot of cranberry bogs and ponds and lakes. Go take a walk down to this pond. I'm not sure if this pond that I'm walking up to is Faring Pond or Charge Pond. But either way, it's a beautiful area. Looks like there's a cabin or something down here. This is the view. Not sure if that's a cabin way off in the distance. Maybe we can check that out. Like there's a little plaque or something over here with some information. So we'll go check this out and see what it says. Whew. All right, so this is where we are. Miles Standard State Forest. Says anything. Well, anyways, if you want to look up Miles Standish State Forest, this is where I'm at. All right, so there you go. Let's go pay, take a peek. Let's go take a peek at that cabin over there and see what that is. And then uh, we'll get into why I came out here. <laughs> Honestly, I came out here to show you what I'm doing out here as opposed to doing it in my driveway. You know, my neighbors already think I'm a weirdo anyways. They're probably going to be like, what the hell is she doing in her truck? So, I don't know. So I'd rather come out here, spend the day with you guys show you what I've been making and why and uh, yeah I brought all the makings for like I said my simple my simple sexy salad it's so delicious I've been on the salad kick lately and salad doesn't just have to be a boring iceberg lettuce type of situation you know you can pretty much make it anything you want Look at this. Wow. If these are the cabins here, these are kind of a nice setup, huh? Look at that. I doubt you'll be able to get into any of these. Home sweet cottage. Yeah, it's locked, but of course I'm going to try it. And then you come down to the water. Look at that. That's beautiful. So let's go down and check out the water.
It's so still. Boat right there. Obviously, I'm not going to attempt to walk out onto that. Way cool. All right, I'll show you more of the area, but let me get to why I brought you out here. And uh, after all, it is a do-it-yourself type of project that I want to show you. So I might as well get to it. My videos can get long and drawn out because I get sidetracked so easily. I plan on doing some camping out here once the spring um, has sprung, <laughs> so to speak. They have secluded campsites, so that would be pretty cool. And I'm going to also do some dispersed camping which is not a campground. I'm gonna do some stealth camping. And I've uh, been scoping out an area for that as we speak. Not at this moment, but... Oh. This is really cool. It's like hardly anybody out here. But then again, I'm out here on my day off, so it's like the middle of the week. Who's really out here, you know? <laughs> There's my car. So, part of this video is going to be mostly filmed in my car. Well, I shouldn't say mostly, but this portion of it is going to be filmed in my truck. And I'll show you why. I was just taking my shoes off, and now I'm going to have to jump in back. I could go outside, but I don't have my shoes on. And I got the car running because it's cold. So, come on in the back. Let's jump in the back of my truck, guys. <laughs> Excuse the butt shot. <laughs> All right, so what I wanted to show you, hold on, let me see if I can get a better angle. What I wanted to show you is these little screens that I've been, uh, not even screens, they're like privacy window covers that you can make out of this material. It's called Reflectix. They sell it by the huge roll. You can get it at any home improvement store. You can even find it on Walmart if you look up Reflectix. Um, R-E-F-L-E-C-T-I-X and it's an insulation. It's kind of like a bubble wrap that's got some heavy-duty like foil type insulating material and I've blacked it out on one side with tape um, basically to make it look like I already have tinted windows but to basically make it look like so you can't see in the vehicle at all. It just looks like it's nighttime and you won't be able to see anything in here. And the reason why I'm doing that, if you haven't figured it out already by looking at the truck, I'm kind of setting my truck up uh, for um, car camping. I'm turning my SUV into, let me see if I can do this, <laughs> let me get down. So I'm turning my truck into a no build camper. So I can pretty much stealth camp and go wild camping and car camping at different locations. And that's what I'm doing. And obviously when you go to these places, you don't want to be sleeping in your vehicle with all your windows open and everything. I'm glad I have, um, I have a sunroof so I can easily shut that but for ventilation. I can open that and to rectify that situation, since you don't want bugs coming in in nicer weather, I thought it would be cool to, um, I've seen it on the internet, uh, so I, that's where I got that idea from, is getting a screen and putting some magnets on it so I can lay that over the top of my sunroof so no bugs will come in, but I'll still be able to get the ventilation. And if I have to, I can take these reflective panels that I'm going to be putting in the windows and um, I can bend it down to be able to peek out if I want to. Let me just show you how this fits in here if you can see it. See if I can aim that a little bit better. Just bear with me. It's a little difficult filming from inside your vehicle. 
But anyway, so there's a lot of different methods to doing this. Um, I'm pretty impatient, so I didn't use the, you can put a bunch of paper and stick it onto the window with, you know, some masking tape and all that kind of stuff. I just basically measured about how much reflectix that I would need. And I'll show you how it comes, but for right now, I'm just telling you, I, I cut out like a square and I just jammed it in there uh, just to, and then I just used a Sharpie and I'll show you that in a minute, but this is what they look like. This would be the inside of what you see. And this is the outside. And let me show you how that just fits in there. And afterwards, I'll take you around the truck and show you that there aren't any light leaks and you can't see in. The stuff is pretty moldable and bendable. Look at that. It just fits right in. No light leaks at all. And as a bonus in the cooler temperatures, it does give you a little bit of an R value. So it does have an insulating property. So that's what the stuff is used for originally. And uh, basically every car camper has familiarity, familiar, 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 they're familiar with this product. So there you go. You can look it up and you'll find a whole bunch of videos on this. But yeah, you just take that and I'll show you how to do that as I do the back window or one of the side windows, I'll show you how to do that. But I just wanted to show you that that's how easy it fits in. A lot of people, depending on how tight they have it in the window, they might want to put a little bit of tape on there so you can yank it out. I just cut mine to size just a little bit bigger so I can just basically grab it and pull it off. What I used um, to black it out here is masking tape. I just got a big roll of, I mean masking tape, of duct tape. I'm a professional at these videos, huh? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. But I have a big roll of black duct tape. We've all seen duct tape before. You can use Gorilla Tape, whatever kind of tape. It sticks really, really well to this. So that's what I used. And I'm not too worried about having the edges uh, of silver showing. You can't see it from the outside. And uh, a lot of times you'll see that people will use fabric as well. You can take a spray adhesive and maybe put the fa a fabric, a black fabric uh, on there to use. So you have a black fabric on the outside and some people might want to decorate it by putting um, you know, a fabric on the inside. So you're not looking at this like silver metal looking material. I don't care about the silver metal material. It doesn't bother me. I'm not living in my car car life, but I'm not going to be living in my car. It's not going to be bothering me if I see this silver um, reflectix, you know, looking back at me. But I will give you a tip. If you're going to use fabric, a spray adhesive in a fabric, make sure you get a fabric that doesn't hold water. Maybe something along the lines of like a vinyl-y type material because condensation and everything, it's going to absorb water. And who wants that? You know, you don't want that. So there's something to consider. Make it your own. You know, I'm just kind of giving you um, a guide on what to do for privacy. You know, you're in your vehicle, you're sleeping, you're changing clothes, you're eating, you're doing whatever it is you're doing in your vehicle that you need privacy. Enough said. <laughs> so there you go. Now let's show you how you make one of these. All right, so I spared you of, my, of me jumping back into the front seat. We've all seen enough of that. How this Reflectix comes is on a roll like this, all right? Comes like this, it's really light and it's not too expensive. Feel free to look up the price. It's, it's like, I don't know, less than 20 bucks, maybe even less than that. On Walmart, I think they had it for like $10, depending on how much you need for the, you know, the length or how long you need it to be. So this is what it looks like. And yeah, as you can see, I've been cutting it out and using what I need. So that's why it kind of looks like that.
What I did do though, <laughs> let me show you what I did. What you can do if you have the leftover Reflectix, I mean, cause it is kind of a shame to waste it. What you can do with the Reflectix is, you know, cut a big piece of, a bit of, like cut a big square out that you can fold up. You can put, throw that in your backpack and you can use it as a place to sit. Let me fix this. But you can use the Reflectix as um, a place to sit down on the ground. You can use it as uh, a mat underneath your sleeping pad and sleeping bag. So there's something, there's another use for it. I happen to make a custom koozie. Yeah, this stuff, look how, far, look how that folds around the water. For my smart water bottle, a little bit of duct tape. I just cut a round out and I put it inside and then duct taped it. Just kind of wrapped it around my smart water bottle. So it insulates it. I don't know if you can see that. See? That's what it looks like down on the inside. I think that's pretty cool because why waste it? And it fits right in there. It'll keep my water from freezing out in the cold temperatures. And in the summertime, it'll keep it where my water stays cool. So is uh, an idea of what you can do with leftover Reflectix. Maybe you could also use it to um, insulate your gas canisters, like the little fuel canisters that we use for our stoves. So there's another use for it. I mean, if you really think about it, the possibilities are endless with this material. I love it. You're going to be seeing Reflectix everything in my videos. Just kidding. Not going to go there. But yeah, I am going to use it. And uh, I, I probably will use it for a sit pad, you know. Um, why not so there's something when you're out on a hike you don't want to carry you know get a big chair or a little chair or anything like that you just have a little bit of reflectix in your backpack and you have a clean spot to sit down so there's that but anyways let me get to uh cutting out a piece and we're going to fit it to the window so you can see how easy it is i don't have the patience to do all the paper and stick it up on there and then trace it all out then take that template and put it down onto the reflectix and then cut that out I mean, you do whatever works for you. I, I don't have the patience for that. I basically just took a, a square of a rough cut size of the window, shoved it all in there and took a Sharpie and marked around the edge um, a little bit bigger than what the um, size of the window is because you want to trim it up. You don't want to cut it too um, close to or too short you don't want to cut too much off because then you'll have light gaps and it's always better to be able to trim some off because you can't put material back in so we're going to do that i already have one made for this window you just saw the little window i had uh, that one's done and we'll make one for the rear windows so let's do that i'm like and then we'll get to making our sexy salad. Mm. Sorry about the car noise right at the moment. I do have the car running. And as you can see, the reason why I'm showing you this is it because I'm in the process. Let me back that out a little bit. I'm in the process of uh, outfitting my car to be a camper and it's going to be a no build. So I'm working out my sleep system right here. I have all kinds of layers. I have a blanket. I have another blanket. I have a, like so another blanket. I have my uh, sleep pad right here. I have a reflective mat right there. So I've been kind of building that up and it's pretty comfortable. And I'll show you that I do fit and it is really comfortable. And for this area, I'm just working out um, what I can use for you know, like a little table and shelving system right there. So that's what I'm working on right there. So that's why I'm showing you these panels of Reflectix for security. So if anybody's into doing car camping, this is what you want to use. Or maybe you have another system, but there are things you can buy that are pre-made. But why spend all the money? It's kind of satisfying to do a project by yourself. Um, you do feel a level of satisfaction when you made it yourself and you can customize it any which way you want to so that's the beauty of it so let's get to cutting so i guess what i'm going to do first is just at least measure a piece of the material that i need so i need about 
26 inches by, let's see, 26 inches by about 17. So 26 by 17, and that's being generous because I am going to have to trim it down. So, so 26 by 17. So, just roll it out. Roll out. Do, 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 do. And this stuff is extremely easy to cut. The pair says it just cuts it easy. So, all right, we'll say 26 inches on that line right there. Get my Sharpie. So I'm gonna go 26. I'm gonna cut down that line. Grab my scissors, my skizzers. I don't know if you can see that. I just kind of marked it with a Sharpie along this like long little line right there. So I can just cut that out and, and I'll show you how easy that cuts. Doesn't matter where you go, there's always a plane flying overhead. <laughs> but that's alright. Alright, so I got 26 inches across right there. And I'm gonna measure down, like I said, about 17 inches and just chop it off right there. And then fit it in there and I'll show you how we do that. Two. And how I'm just keeping a straight line is I'm just cutting along the pattern of the bubbles, if that's what you want to call it, for lack of a better term. Some people want to use a straight edge. Feel free, have at it, however you want to do it. There are no really rules. All right, and here's the excess. Just throw that over there. So this is what I'm working with right here. This piece right here. So let's get to fitting and cutting. All right, I'll show you how moldable this is. It's really easy. This is how easy this molds in. So there you go. It's in there. Just a rough cut. Rough fit rather. There it is. All right. Now I'm just going to take a Sharpie and outline where I got to cut off any excess. I still want to leave it big. So I'm only going to cut off like a little bit. That off. Come down here.
And this to me, I just find easier than having to tape up a whole bunch of pieces of paper and all that kind of stuff. All right, so I made a line there and I made a line there and now I'm gonna cut it. All right. And just cut outside the line at first. Like I said, you can always retrim, but you can't add. All right, let's go around here. So did that, excess, let's refit it. Look at that. I think that looks all right. Yeah, I have to take a little more off the corner. be good because I can tuck that up so I don't need to cut don't need to cut that all right let me show you where I'm at so this is more of a close-up see that look at that it's like right in the frame so obviously I'm just going to trim just a little bit off of there not going to take too much a little bit right there and maybe just a little more right there. Other than that, we're pretty much done. And I'll show you the reason. And this is the reason why I'm gonna black it out. Cause you can see, you can see, I have tinted windows, so I'm trying not to show my reflection so you can kind of see. But you can see that bubble, that bubble pattern and silverness. And I don't want that. So that's why I'm taping it with the, the black tape on the outside. So once all that happens, you're not even going to be able to see in any of these windows. And that's what it looks like on the inside. So let's just get to marking a little bit more. All right. Now see how that tucks right in? Yeah, I won't have to do any kind of trimming up there. Just a little bit to get rid of this little flap area. And maybe just a little bit i'll probably just cut like a little over my line right there and that'll be enough because i'll be able to jam that down into the window so all right so i'm just gonna just take off this little flap right there all right i'll just take off a little bit of that edge Right there, not too much. Like I said, you can always trim it to fit, but you can't add, so just do a little bit at a time. All right, cut that right there. Corner right there. All right, let's make some final cuts. All right, so I basically have it where I want it. It's pretty much it all tucked up underneath the molding of the window. There's not gonna be any light leaks because it's pretty much jammed in there. I could take off just a little teeny bit on the edges right there, and maybe just a little bit here. What I'll do is I'll just cut on the inside of that little Sharpie line right there, and I'm gonna call this done. So let me just finish that up. And yeah, and then we'll just do a final fitting. Look at that, it just tucks right up in. All right, so I'm gonna call this done. I could probably just take a, you know what? I'll, I'll probably just trim just a teeny bit more just on, just to neaten it up just a little bit right there. Don't really wanna trim it up too much here because if you noticed, I can just tuck it right into the molding right there. I don't know if you can see that. But right, just do that, tuck it up, tuck it up, tuck it up. And it fits right in. So 
So that's ready for the next stage, which is basically just running tape on the other side. And to help me so I don't get confused, I'll show you what I did. I just wrote on the back with a Sharpie. I don't know how well it'll pick up, but I wrote right rear. So that way I know this is going to be the side that I tape. And now I have a template. All I have to do is take this shape, cut it out, and use it for that window. So the only one I'll have to make is that and the back. And uh, maybe, no, you know, I already made the, I already made one for this. So just that one and that one. And I don't know if you really want to see me tape it. So I think you've, you can pretty much get the idea. I mean, you don't need that much instruction. Just take your tape. It doesn't matter which direction you put it. It just ends up looking like that. So that's that little window back there. All right. So that's that window back there. So there you go. Yeah, so there you have it. There's uh, your privacy blackout covers for the inside of your vehicle. And you can do this. It doesn't matter if you have an SUV, a camper, a car. It doesn't matter. You can use this method to get the same result. However you want to do it, whether you just jam it in there, trace it out and cut it. Or if you want to be that person that tapes it all up and creates the nicest, neatest little template. If you do that, that's great. Take that template and cut just a little bit bigger around your template. Uh, so that way you don't overcut and because you don't you want to jam it into the molding of the windows or else you'll get those little gaps where you know, light can escape if you have, you know, your truck or your vehicle on the inside lit up with lights because, you know, you're not going to be sitting in the dark and uh, you don't want to really attract that kind of attention. And the reason why I like having it blacked out to make it look like it's just tint is you don't want to attract attention if you're, you know, camping anywhere and you see the shiny aluminum looking foil type stuff on the windows and instantly automatic, you're like, somebody's in that vehicle and who wants that kind of attention. All right, so I hope that helped. And uh, yeah, let's get to making that salad. I'm starving and it's coming up on lunch. I'm looking at my wrist like I got a watch on. I don't. So that's why I wanted to show you that today because it is something that I am going to be utilizing. You obviously know I have some sort of a camp situation coming up soon. I'm converting, like I said, my truck into a camper. Um, I'm not making any builds. I'm not doing any kind of build or anything like that. I'm just trying to get it as uh, comfortable and utilitarian as possible because this is my everyday vehicle that I use to get back and forth to work. So, you know, I can't be driving a camper type vehicle. I mean, I guess I could, it wouldn't matter, but I don't really want to make any mods onto my vehicle for, so for when I either go to sell it or trade it in or whatever I'm going to do to it. Uh, yeah, and I only have a few more payments, so this thing's going to be paid off pretty soon. Yay! Happy dance! <laughs>
I'll bring it back in a moment. So what I have for the salad, and I'll show it to you after it's done, but I have some baby arugula right there that I'm gonna use. I have some baby butter greens right there. I have some blueberries right there that I'm gonna use. I have a little bit of cottage cheese. Some people like this stuff, some people don't. I happen to like it in my salad and it's got a little bit of chive in there. I have some almond slivers or slices, some sliced almonds. And I have some golden raisins that I'm gonna put in there. And for the dressing, I love this stuff. It's by Ken's and it's a honey balsamic. And this is bomb, I love this, this is so good. So I'm gonna get to assembling the salad and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And then we're gonna dive right in. Ugh, it's cold. Yeah, let's have a picnic. Oh my God, it's like 30 degrees. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this in the car, but let's just assemble it. So that is one fine looking salad, if I do say so myself. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Bon appetit. Yep, we're having a salad right here in the front seat of my truck. And after I eat the salad, we'll go out and we'll talk about a few things. Mm -mm. Oh my God, this is so good. I think the blueberries and <clears throat> the golden raisins give it like a little bit of sweetness and it kind of cuts the bitterness of the um, arugula. Sometimes I like to use spinach greens too. Do you ever put spinach in your salad? It's really good. Try it out. <laughs> I don't know, some people don't like salads, but you know, salads don't have to be just a boring iceberg lettuce and tomato and cucumber and celery type of a situation. Mm. And the almond slices just kind of give it like a nice crunch. We could also put in um, you know those like French's onions, like a lot of people use it for like green bean casserole. You can just take a few of those and crumble those in too. And that's like so delicious. 
like I've just like been on this kick to where I'm making all kinds of like crazy salads and I love it. Mmm. <laughs> Somebody just rode by on a bike. They just looked at me like, what the hell is this person doing? Mm. All right. Well, <laughs> mm. food makes me happy. <laughs> That's why I'm on salads. But uh, anyway, I'm going to continue slamming the salad to my face. And um, afterwards, we'll uh, go out back. I'll show you how um, I actually fit in the back on that little sleep system that I have going. We'll talk about a couple of things and um, yeah. So if you're still here <laughs> and uh, you're still with me on this video, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm always trying to change it up here in the video. You know, here we go with the YouTube -y stuff, but feel free to like and subscribe. You don't have to. Like I said, I'm always trying to change things up. There might be something you can see um, that you see that you might like and there might not be. And uh, if you found this video useful, feel free to like it. And hopefully you got something out of it. <laughs> One of the park employees just rode by. They just slowed down a little bit and looked at me. <laughs> Yeah, hi. How you doing? <laughs> but, yeah, if you found this video useful, let me know. And, um, I appreciate you coming along. We're almost done with this video, guys. Not quite. There's a couple of things I want to talk about. And, uh, I want to address a, a gripe. <laughs> but, uh, alright. I will see you in a moment. Bon appetit. That salad was so good, guys. Oh, I'm full. And now, I'm gonna treat myself. To a Coors Light. Before anybody says anything, I am not drinking and driving, all right? I have one beer. It's my day off, I'm off today, I'm off tomorrow. And uh, I go back to work on Friday. But anyways, I am going to sit here and enjoy this beer, so thanks, Steve, for contributing to buy me a coffee, and to all the people that have contributed to buy me a coffee. I generally buy coffee, but, you know, something, it just seemed appropriate to be out here, and uh, I'm going to enjoy this Coors Light, so cheers and thank you. And I'll be here for a little while. I'm going to take a hike. It's not like I'm just going to be like, and having this beer, don't drink and drive. Absolutely do not do that. Even if you have a sip, don't drink and drive. All right, so there's that out of the way. <laughs> but um, what I wanted to address is um, somebody had recently asked me to do a gear update. Um, I don't know if you can remember. I'll list it down below if you want to see it. I, I um, reviewed on my own. I bought the, the Skyspur Sky Tenger 50 backpack or... Anyways, it was a 60 liter backpack and I touted its praises and I was like, it's awesome. And somebody noticed that I wasn't using it. I'm telling you, these people on YouTube, they notice everything. They don't miss a trick. You guys don't miss anything. And um, I used it for a while. But to tell you the truth, I love that backpack. But it was just a little bit too big for my small five foot two frame. So I ended up giving it away as a gift to someone I used to explore with and um and he loves it and you know uses it so that's the only reason other than that i would still be using it so there's that so it's not like it broke nothing happened to it uh nobody paid me i bought it on my own and just uh, i fell in love with it so so there's that okay so good luck to him in the backpack all right there you go so there's that and um also i wanted to thank a viewer who sent me a homemade alcohol stove Dennis I'll be uh, using that in an upcoming video so 
I appreciate that. Very talented. He actually made an alcohol stove, sent me a little base that it sits on and, um, and instructions on exactly how to use it and exactly how to use it. So there's that. And um, yeah, I did address that actually I have to go back to work on Friday. Somebody had asked me, do, do I work? Yeah, I don't get paid on YouTube. I, I choose not to be monetized. All right, I'm not in this to make money. I know a lot of people are and that's fine. You know, I understand it. You know, why not get paid for doing something that you love? But this is something that I like to do just to share my experiences um, you know, meet new people to talk to, um, and everybody that I already is subscribed. I appreciate you guys so much. You give me a lot of encouragement and a lot of support. So I just want to say thank you to that. So when I'm asking people to like and subscribe, it's, um, you know, I want to engage more people and, and that's, that's what that is. I'm not trying to make you, you know, subscribe to raise anything up to where I get money. I'm, I, I choose not to be monetized, even though I could be. I, I don't want to be. All right. So there's that. And uh, my gripe is that happens a lot. And the only reason why I'm bringing it up is uh, it happened to me twice in one week. Uh, you know how like sometimes you might go somewhere and you, you, you pull into a parking lot there's there's nobody there there's nobody there at all and you pull into the parking lot to either enjoy the scenery you know do some things on your phone blaze you know smoke something or whatever whatever it is that you're doing there's a whole parking lot and there's no one there and then somebody might come in and they park right up next to you I don't know what that is. Um, it kind of aggravates me. It's just like, don't, can't you see that I'm here off in a corner by myself? And then someone will come in. They have a whole selection of parking spots and they park right up next to you. I hate that. I don't, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the law of attraction. Maybe it's people attract other people. I have no idea what that is, but that just irks the hell out of me. <laughs> Uh, so that's what I wanted to, um, has that ever happened to you? This feels so wrong. I don't even know if this is legal. Drinking in the front seat of my car. Let me take the keys out of the ignition just in case anybody comes and they're like, oh, you're going to be drinking and driving. No, I'm not drinking and driving. I have just, just one beer. That's it. And then after this, I'll take you around. We'll, we'll go hiking. If you're still into this video and you're still with me, you know, we'll check out some more scenery. And then when I do leave, it, it's going to be at least 45 minutes to an hour later that I go on the road. So there's no worries there. But yeah, I mean, has that ever happened to you where you just go somewhere and you're just by yourself sitting there? You could be reading. You could be just doing whatever it is you're doing and you're by yourself. Someone will just pull into the parking lot and they're like, oh, let me just pull on and they pull right up next to you i can't stand that that's like one of my things i don't understand but like i said maybe it's the law of attraction maybe it's people attract people i don't know but um i guess that's all i wanted to <laughs> to gripe about so those are the things i wanted to say and uh, i appreciate you coming along on this video if you want to stick around feel free to stick around I'm just going to be going around the park and checking out some new areas of Miles Standish State Forest. And uh, while I was sitting here, after I just chowed down that humongous salad, this place is 26 miles. Um, it's one of the one of the largest. I think October Mountain is like the largest area, but um, this is the largest pine barren and oak forest in Massachusetts. One of and. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I didn't even know we had a Pine Barrens. And when, and when I think of the Pine Barrens, I immediately think of New Jersey and the New Jersey and the Jersey Devil. I was planning on going out there one time to do uh, an investigation. And who knows, maybe I'll do that one of these days, you know. Um, like I said, this channel is all about the outdoors and changing it up. And I just want to say I appreciate you guys coming along. So I'm going to sit here. Maybe go outside, walk around, finish this beer, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in a few if you're still with me, and we'll go check out some more areas of the Miles Standard State Forest. But until then, guys, I will see you.
on the next one. I appreciate you coming along and I hope you found this information useful on the, these privacy screens. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. That's it. See you next week. So this is what it looks like on the inside. not see in the windows my car is just dirty so press it all the way up you can't see in at all so that's what that looks like guys so I just wanted to show you these are what they look like you know with the uh, tape I mean, you know, it's easy to tape up. So they're all taped up and I'll show you where I'm going to store them. So they're out of the way. Sorry about my shadow, but I'll show you where I'm going to store them. So where I've stored them is right under where your spare tire would be. See that? They are nice and flat. Don't have to fold them up and get them all wonky and crinkly, even though they are foldable, but I'd rather keep them straight. So hopefully you can see that. And that's where I'm going to store them. Hope it helps, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.